Hi everybody, this is Panina Taylor and I'm coming to you today with just a thought on the Parsha. This week's Torah portion is called Vayeshev, which means, and he dwelt. And it is found in Genesis or Bereshit chapter 37 through 40. The Parsha opens up with the story of Joseph. Joseph is now 17 years old, he's grown up, and we're introduced to who he is and how he's different from his brothers. His brothers are shepherds, they're out in the fields with the flocks, and Joseph is different. Joseph is a thinker, he's a philosopher, he's a dreamer, and unfortunately for his brothers, he's also his father's favorite. And so Joseph comes to his family and he says, God gave me a dream. And he shares these dreams with his brothers and with his parents. And his brothers become jealous. Well, they eventually conspire to kill him. But they are convinced not to. And instead, he ends up getting sold into slavery. He ends up in Egypt. Now, what's really interesting is throughout this story, really, Joseph says very little at this point. Here he is, he is captured by his brothers, he's thrown into a pit while they're waiting to sell him as a slave. We don't hear a word from him. He gets sold as a slave into Egypt and he ends up serving the second in command of all Egypt, Potiphar, who is the, the chamberlain or the caretaker of the of Paro, of the Pharaoh, and everything that is his is in Potiphar's hands. And Yosef is now taking care of Potiphar's household, and he is succeeding exceedingly, so much so that Potiphar trusts him with everything in his home. And then, unfortunately, Potiphar's wife decides that she's interested in Joseph, and she tries to seduce him. And in the process, he says, look, your husband trusts me with everything that he owns, except you, because you're his wife. How could I do such a terrible thing to God and to my master. And so as he's fleeing, she ends up tearing some of his clothing and is able to then frame him and claim that he assaulted her. So Yosef finds himself thrown in prison. And yet again, we hear nothing about it. All we see is that Yosef did his best. He succeeded when he was sold into slavery as Potiphar's servant. He succeeded when he was working in, when he was thrown into prison, he is a man of incredible integrity. No matter what situation that he finds himself in, he's not complaining, he's simply doing his best. How many of us are like that, right? When we get into a, a situation which is negative, do we just take it in stride and keep silent and say, hey, all of this is for the best and just do our best in whatever situation we find ourselves in? I don't know about you, but I tend to complain just a little bit about my situation sometimes, but not Joseph. Joseph didn't complain. He just did his best and he succeeded and he prospered. And in this story, he comes across two people who were servants of, of the king himself, the king's cupbearer and the king's baker, and they had some dreams. And Joseph interpreted the dreams for them. And in the end, all he says, Throughout this whole story, this is the first time you hear him objecting in any way. He asks the cupbearer when he goes back to Pharaoh to remember him that he might be released. Meanwhile, the story ends with the cupbearer forgetting about Joseph. Next week, of course, we'll hear the rest of the story. But the question and the thing that came to mind as I was reading it was, how is it that Joseph was able to do his best in these horrible situations. And he says absolutely nothing about, you know, he doesn't complain, he doesn't say anything, he just does his best. And the interesting thing is that we can find the secret in the Haftarah for this week. The Haftarah is the reading from the prophets that accompanies the Torah reading each week. And this week, the Haftarah is from Amos, chapters 2 and 3. And in chapter 3, we read something very interesting. It says, Can there be evil that occurs in a city and God did not make it? Can evil occur in a city and God did not make it? Wow, wait a minute. How can that be? God is the definition of truth, right? 
How could God create evil? Well, this is the absolute key which Joseph understood and King David understood to success in everything in life. And that is to understand that everything that happens in our life happens for good. Even the things that seem to be bad. See, we can ask the question, how could such bad things be good? How could there be any good in this situation? How could there be any good in the Holocaust? How could there be any good in my being sick or losing a loved one? And the key is understanding that we don't understand. It's a hard thing for us to accept as human beings. We always want to understand. We always were so curious. We want to know why. But we have to understand that we see the world from a very limited point of view, from a very small, limited perspective. We don't see what God sees. We don't know what God knows. But when we understand that everything he does, he does for our good, we can understand that even in the bad, there must be some good. And so we can do our best in every situation and we will prosper and we will succeed. Well, this is Penina Taylor and that was just a thought on the Parsha.